In a world where lies are commonplace, where the media fights for clicks no matter the cost, much like a soul-starved devil down in Georgia ready to make a deal, where wacky ideas get blamed on inebriation, i.e. Modelo. Two men, well, one really manly man that's so manly he doesn't even have to try, and another man who can't walk on grass because of his Yeezys, come together each week to break the ice and talk about the things that no one cares about. All right, America, get your brains ready for a feast. Here's some food for thought. It's time for another bad podcast. Is that good, Brennan? Hey, guys, this is Ben. That's Daniel. It's time for another bad podcast. Right off the bat, Daniel, my dad made a joke the other day about... um, when I said that we have an attraction toward each other and I was talking about gravity and uh, he's made a joke that me and you might be um, infatuated with each other and after he said that I'm starting to, to see why I'm kind of attracted to you you have a resemblance to my wife um, which is kind of weird I've never noticed it until now anyways this is Sable hi Daniel was going to go to New York and so we planned for Sable to replace him but uh, I'm number two. As far as as far as we know, he's gone. <laughs> uh, one last thing. <laughs> we hopefully you heard an intro before uh, you heard me say it's time for another bad podcast. Don't know how long it's gonna stick around, but at least I went on this one. Beer of the week. Pacific. Oh wait, hold on, hold on. Uh, No, it is Cerveza Pacifico, another Mexican beer. I was trying to get Sol, but S-O-L. But uh, how does Walmart sell a liquor or a beer that a liquor store doesn't? That's weird. Did you know Walmart sells, makes their own brand of beer? No, I did not. It's called the Three Blind Mice. Oh, I didn't know it was by Walmart. Yeah. Ooh. I should be the assistant. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) All right, so this time, instead of getting into the, the, the topics that make everybody want to leave this show, we're going to talk about things that Sable uh, wants to talk about, which will probably make people want to listen. What were you wanting to talk about? Um, I kind of wanted to talk about one of my favorite things about really getting to know somebody is hearing their animal voice. Um, everyone has their own little animal voice of how they talk to their personal animals or any animal in general and it's super pure and innocent and I love it and uh, you wouldn't think that Manly Ben over here has an animal voice but he sure I don't. does he does <laughs> and I don't know if he'll tell us um, if you know anything about us you know we have three cats my number one all time favorite cat I do have a favorite her name is Nipples. Uh, I like to talk very high pitched to all my animals. Nipas. Nipas. You have to get a little bit uh, Japanese anime with it. Nipas. Whoa. Cultural appropriation. Uh, you need to pay tribute to your sources. I guess you kind of did Japanese anime. All right, continue. It checks out. We're solid. We don't have a budget for HR or anything, so I have to play that role. I'm also playing the role of legal, too, so you're good right now. Okay. But don't ever say sorry, because that admits guilt, and I didn't try to refrain. Sorry, did I? Wait, you just did. Cut! <laughs> uh, okay, yes, I want to talk about animals, Sable, but there's something pressing we have to talk about. I stepped on a freaking nail during the week. Um, and it hurt. It hurt bad. Uh, I was trying to water my plants because, you know, they were looking a little parched. A little on the, um, thirsty side. I go over there, turn on the water. And you know what? The back of this, we'll call it a set for now, was the trim I pulled <laughs> off. You convinced me to take it outside and what happens? I step on it and it goes through my... It looks terrible. Okay, I want you to know... You know what looked terrible? Was the hole in my foot when I had to clean it. Could have been avoided if we had left that Bins, stuff standing up. I, if any woman knows how men get when they're sick or injured, that is how Ben is being. Because I will say, do not interrupt. Whenever we first got this house, we had piled up all of the boards into our master bath. That's where I do my makeup. And guess who stepped 
on a freaking rusty nail first. It was me, newsflash. It was stuck in my foot and I had to call for Ben and we had to jerk it out and I finally got it out and then it was bleeding everywhere and I could write my name with all the blood that was squirting out. So, and then on top of that, we were in bed and he convinced me I was going to die from tetanus. Well, you can. I mean, that's a that's a thing. Whatever. Well, I, I just want you to be prepared. I'm here. I didn't die. You just want to make sure you had life insurance for me. Um... You know what? Just to clarify, you didn't step on a nail. You stepped on a tack strip. <laughs> that do you know how? Okay, can you, here, can you zoom in on my fingers? That's how big a tack is. Okay. I stepped on a was, nail. You still have the nail in the tack strip. There was a nail in that tack strip. Oh, actually, it, Why wasn't, would there... it wasn't a tack strip. It was a whole baseboard. Okay. Uh, apparently, you are exemplifying my previous comments on memory because you're not recalling. <laughs> Whatever. I stepped on a nail. Haven't got locked jaw yet, but you can, you can die from tetanus. Tetanus is caused by a bacteria, and they say after you get tetanus, you're supposed to get a booster shot every 10 years. Well, guess who didn't get a tetanus shot? Hell no. I can survive anything. Except you, the nail on my foot. I mean, what you <laughs> didn't know is this is actually an argument podcast. We're no, it's not. <laughs> Look, uh, okay, whatever. I expected more sympathy from my wife, but that's. Ah, I'm just saying he attacked me, so I'm gonna defend myself. But no. Okay, forget the pine needles. Or uh, what? <laughs> forget the nails. <laughs> I want to talk my about my pine seed. <laughs> Look. Okay. Me and Daniel have talked about how I like to do the most like start from nothing so i've never grown a tree from a seed it all started when i wanted to take a cutting from my parents tree we have two trees in our front yard and i wanted to get a cutting from one of them because if you take a cutting and it survives it's the exact dna of the well you can't even say parent tree because it is the the little baby is the parent okay so the cutting is the same exact dna as the tree you took it from and I thought, I mean, how cool it would be if I could propagate cuttings from this tree and take this tree with us everywhere we went. I could plant my home tree over all of these different places. You know how cool that would be? Mm-hmm. Hit me right there. So that didn't work. And then working over there in OGP, we'd spend some time out there getting pine cones. And I gathered enough seeds, try to plant them. They didn't grow. And then I refrigerated them finally because I read about that. And then... One started growing, and then, dude, look, Daniel, uh, Brendan, I just, wait, Daniel's not here. Brendan, <laughs> Brendan, I just checked out my, my, on my seeds. Another one's growing in the exact same pot that the first one started growing in. Nothing else is. Two pine trees in one little tiny pot. They're like the little 38 cent pots at Walmart. They're like this big. It's the cutest thing. They are cute. Um, there was one other thing. I want to talk about the amount of coincidences we've experienced today. Did you write them all down? Uh, no, I wrote it on a few things and I'm not going in order and I should have because now I'm going back to the nails. The day after I was really sore, uh, getting up and walking around like in the morning. And then throughout the day, I realized I don't know the appropriate amount of a limp I should have because every so often it would hurt really bad. And then I could walk without, oh, my phone just died. I'll try to remember from (laughs) memory. Uh, after walking around a little bit, I was like, wow, I really don't need to limp as much as I'm limping. And then I'd walk fine, and then I'd sit down for a minute. Then I'd get up, and my foot would really hurt, and so I'd limp again. And it was like constantly, you the next day even said, quit limping. And it's like, I, I'll see him. I want to pick him up, okay? And I'm on the <laughs> curb in the fire lane of Walmart waiting for him because we were going to lunch together. And I parked a little bit far away, not blocking the door so cars can get through, people can cross. But he stood there and waited right at the door, and I had to drive up because he didn't want to walk. Convenience. Come on. A car's got wheels. What do I got? Feet. You're spoiled. That's not spoiled. It's a little bit spoiled. Okay, well, I want to talk about the coincidences of today. We're going to get to the animals, I promise you. But say, well, let's talk about what happened today. We woke up this morning. We're both off today. Brent, I haven't told you this yet because you're gonna love this. Woke up this morning and we're like, we want to go. I say, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go buy you some ranch house uh, breakfast. About two hours later, we finally go. Okay, keep in mind, we waited two hours after we had the idea. 
Whoop. Or, sorry. Um, actually, look at this real quick. I want to say thank you, Daniel. He got me a Cuphead cup. Cuphead is like one of the coolest games that's out there right now. Um, anyways, we go to eat uh, breakfast at the ranch house. We're there for probably an hour and a half. And finally, we're like, you know what? It's time to go. We get in the car. My car, if you have a USB, the flash drive in the port, it boots up automatically. It starts playing the USB every time. This specific time, it booted up the CD, and my, my flash drive was still plugged in. Guess what the CD was? It was a song from the guy over in Berryville. It goes, yeah. we're going to Walmart, Walmart, here we come. Oh. And we were going to Walmart. Now, look, when you leave Ranch House, if you know, there's a back way to leave, and there's you can leave out the front way to, like, the little plaza. And I'm like, you know what? Why not? Why not? Let's just go out the back way. So I got the back way, and there's two ways you can go when you go out the back way. I took a left, and instead of going straight, the amount of coincidences are crazy because you go out, and you take a left or right. I took a left, so there's two choices, and then you can go either go straight, left, or right there. And I went left, so that's one, two, I don't know how many choices that is now. Five? <laughs> and we turn on that road, and then I see a, a, a wrecker with a motorcycle on top. I'm like, oh, that's weird. I've never seen a motorcycle on top of a wrecker. Actually, I have. Um, but... I never seen a motorcycle on top of a wrecker. I'm like, hmm, that bike looks just like my dad's. Hmm, that guy looks just like my dad. Oh my god, my dad's on that wrecker. <laughs> so I pull up next to him. What are the coincidences? My dad, we waited two hours, ate for an hour and a half. If we had been thirty minutes differentiating, I would have missed him. I was right there exactly when he needed me to pick him up. What the? He- what the heck? First, it was eating late or whatever to meet up with my dad on a coincidence. Then the CD started playing, and our destination was Walmart when it's not even supposed to play. And then later tonight, I, I got the hankering. If anybody knows, I've been trying to get me a Walther weapon because, uh, specifically the PPK or P99, because that's a James Bond gun from Pierce Brosnan. And, uh,. What am I talking about? Oh, and thinking about it, because my gun didn't come in yet, I was like, I'm going to play the old GoldenEye 007 on 64. Go to my parents' house, get it. And I'm like, oh, here's a second copy of 007 GoldenEye. How how weird is that? We got two copies. I don't remember that the whole time growing up that we had two copies. Come home, start playing, and my game isn't saving. Because, you know, they've got save files. A little bit of looking up, I realized that every cartridge usually has like a battery in it that helps save store the memory. I go to my parents again, I get the second copy of Goldeneye, and it works. What is the coincidence that the only game I wanted to play just so happened we had a cop a second copy of it that I've never seen in my life? Also, life's a simulation. What? Whenever you were at your parents' house, I literally text you. And then you call me the minute I hit sent. Happens all the time. Me and Daniel were talking about that actually on the way over there. How like uh, we believe in this telepathic ability to... People talk about that with twins actually a lot. That they just, like when you're thinking of a twin, they start, they call you, you know. I do believe that that is a... I guess maybe we call it magic now. But maybe there's like a real big scientific reasoning behind it that they'll find out in 50 years. Who knows? Of course, in 12 years, I guess, we're going to be irrevocably, irrevocably irrevo- ruin the planet. So, who knows? Maybe we won't even live here another 50 years. What the heck, Goose? Goose? It's Goose. We need, we need a studio. We're also wanting a different scene, or scenario, a different set. But He's hmm. got a Christmas ornament. I know, he loves it. I was playing with him earlier. Oh, there's a segue into animals. Goose. Animal voices. Was that one of them? No. That was one of my animal voices. I, I mean, so. I think each animal has their own little voice. And then each of our animals probably have like 20 different nicknames. So, let's we... start with, um, let's just start down the line with Nipples. Nipas. Her name is Nipples, but it can also be Nipples or Nipas. Any variation of the word Nipples? Yeah. Um, nips. Nipples. Nip, um, I also call her Mama. We have to say it really hard. Mama. Because she had two babies. Uh, Fat Julia is one of her babies. But Julia is a whole different list of names. 
No, let's start with we started Orange Julius. His full name is Orange Julius Caesar Salad Dressing. Uh, then we just called him Julius or Jew Yes. Or Jewy. And then Jewy. And then it became Fat Jewy. Uh, Jewert. Big Booty Jewy. Jewert. Fat Stewart. <laughs> Mr. Pewart. Um. <laughs> I'm gonna start calling him Fatso after watching Twilight Zone. Oh no. I don't like that. A fat so. He's just a little bit thick. Hey, you know? own it. I love it. He's like the perfect kind of squishy and firm. He's like, I don't know, like a good toned butt or something. He's a chub. I, and I could squish him all day long and he doesn't even care. He's just ready to nap. What are they called? Tabbies? Is that what he is? What kind of kid is that called? Yeah. Tabby? Orange Tabby. And nipples is a calico. He reminded me of an orange drink. The only thing I could think of at the time that's an orange drink is an orange Julius. Oh, here he comes. He just slinks around. Slinks around. You can see him on the table on previous videos. Oh, grab him, grab him. Oh, he don't want to be grabbing it, no. In fact, he'll jump on the table later. We'll oh. see him again. Um, okay. And then nipples had another baby. And we called her Jelly Bean. Jelly Bean. And that, honestly, to this day... It ruins. Uh, just thinking about it. Jelly Bean didn't make it. She didn't make it, and I do blame myself. Uh, but I, I re- think I, Nipples pretty much knew. Nipples kind of left her in the litter box. No, no, she was like the her. healthiest kitten, though. Mm-hmm. Remember, Julius didn't even use his back legs for well, whatever. Jelly Bean didn't either, and she had only opened one eye. I don't know. She just. I I just think if what what could we have done differently for her to have survived? You know. Because now... What's that idiot? He, he also started out as Julius the Jerk. Because he was a jerk kitten. And he peed on everything. And now he's a really sweet boy. I remember one time I was changing out the uh, garbage disposal. Well, not one time. When I was changing out the garbage disposal. I was laying on my back on my towel so I wouldn't get wet. And all of a sudden I hear... Pss- I looked down and Nipples oh. was angry peeing on my towel, just so pissed off for some reason. Nipples, she gets kind of angry. <laughs> Whenever we brought in Goose, I'm pretty sure she peed on something. <laughs> and uh, she doesn't, she didn't really like Julius. She liked him as a kitten. Whenever he was her baby, and then he grew up, and then she was like, "That's it, I'm done with you." Well, Goose, he's he's our newest kitten. Um, Sable, you you found him over in Berryville. Uh, yeah, he was under pallets. one of the soil pallets out in the parking lot. Somebody, a customer came and told us, and I went out, found him, and he was just meowing so loud. I had to get um, it was raining. I had to get down and try and dig him out, and his eyes were all crusted, and he had stuff all over him, and he was really really sweet. We, I mean, he had a bath, got him home, and he just slept on us, just purred so loud, and he doesn't. Meow. Yeah. Like he sometimes when he gets really excited, he'll get like a little, but most of the time he just opens up his mouth and <laughs> like he mouths. <laughs> um, and it was a few days after we got him that he like started limping. He wouldn't use his leg, and I was yeah. really worried something was wrong. He's just a weird but cat. He didn't walk around much. We just pretty much held him, and the more he exercised it, he was fine. He's just a weird cat. Like uh, now, I I've gotten him to where if I do that. He didn't come. <laughs> well, I wasn't actually doing it. Oh, okay. They know. <laughs> but when I call him, they'll come and he'll he'll like reach up on my legs as high as his arms will go and like sink in and then just <laughs> <laughs> just do his little most pathetic meow he can. But unlike other cats, he won't gr- like growl at me or hiss at me if I'm holding him food and I don't drop it. Like he'll just gingerly take it with his paw <laughs> and then one time he climbed up all clone he cloned up my legs <laughs> no clone clone is a, I was past. Making a joke oh well i just didn't laugh <laughs> um he he clone up my legs like it was nothing and he just just climbed up and just i was holding him now when you talk about baby voices though let's talk about yogi I don't get a baby voice or an animal voice, Yogi. but I I don't even call you baby. I call Yogi baby. He is a baby. All the animals are babies. I, I call him I call him Honey and Baby. He's a little. You sweet. call him Honey? Yeah. 
That's okay. No, okay. His name is Yogi. Yogi Pup or Yogurt or Yogurt. He he's my he's my little baby. He is a forever puppy. He is not I don't he's a mutt. We don't really know what he is, but he's the same size as when he was a puppy. He's, he's escaped he's, death a few times. <laughs> yes, he's almost died a couple times. He had Parvo and then got attacked by another dog because he's an escaped convict. He loves to get out of the fence and run around and get attention. Yeah, you can't but, be mad at him ever. But because of me, anytime you call him, he'll come to you. If he thinks he's in trouble, you still just call him, he'll come to I you. I want to go find Nipas. Oh, I want, I want Yogi. I want Nipas. I want the yogurt. Look, Ben, from day one, said he hates cats. He hates cats. And then I brought Goose home temporarily to find him another home, and guess who wanted to keep him? It was no, your exact words was, Ben, you need to like build a bond or build an attachment. I said, whatever. why don't you hold him every once in a while? And I'm like, why? And you're like, so you can bond with him or have a moment. I'm like, why would I want to do that if we're going to give him away? I knew your plan, woman. Better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all. Cool story. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's a little bit about Yogi, Goose, Nipaz, Jewy, Hobo. Stewart. Oh, he ox be ox. He ox be ox. Yes. You're not going to talk about he ox be ox? Well, his name's He's rubbing Hobo. up on me. This cat loves me. Here, get back here. Goose. Goose, can you say something? He will not meow. Meow. He's very uncomfortable. He, yeah. Ow. <laughs> Look, you can put him on his back and he, he is like... <laughs> you don't want to do it today. He's shy, I guess, in front of the cameras and all the people not watching. Uh, he ox be ox. How about we got him whenever we lived in Louisiana? Our aunt, or my aunt, had called and said that she found a little dachshund. And we're like, oh, awesome. We love dachshunds. And we just lost our dachshund. So she went and brought him over. He's not a dachshund. He's <laughs> like a dachshund <laughs> with two feet long legs. And, and the smelliest breath. Smelliest breath. Nothing you give him. Oh my god, it smells like dead possum every day. It is pretty disgusting. But he is so hyper. He loves to bark. But he's really a sweet, sweet boy. And we took him. I took him with me because he was kind of my dog whenever I moved in with Ben. And him and Yeah, Yogi, don't forget it. You moved in with me. <laughs> him and Yogi here. <sighs> Our best buds. Hobo's gay a little bit. Yogi is not, but... Yogi's a little prison. <laughs> Don't drop the soap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm prison Mike. The, the Dementors. <laughs> okay, let's keep going. Forget this happened. Oh, uh, no. But... Except hobo is spelled H E A U X B E A U X. People won't understand when we call him Heox. Oh, Beox. sometimes we call him Hoboken, like the city in New Jersey. Hoboken, New Jersey. He's but Jersey. yeah, his brother's like a real hobo. Well, I'm sorry. Hobos. I mean, he was a hobo. That he was found on the levee. And that was just like sorting through trash. If you give him like two month old water in a bowl that's all stagnant or clean water he will go for the stagnant old dirty water well we just talked about animals but really you want to talk about animal voices again I stand to say that I don't have an animal voice well you kind of have an animal voice especially around Goose you don't think that you do and a lot of people don't even realize it but he will be in bed and Goose will jump on and be like Goose come here Goose whatever it gets high pitched. This most, is just most sweet. Dog voices are, or animal voices are high pitched. It's just the Jerry Seinfeld coming out. These pretzels are making me thirsty. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, there's me a lot of silence because I'm used to Daniel being here laughing at my jokes, but whatever. Um, okay, let's continue. If we have to. <laughs> No, you. Nipaz is the prettiest cat. No, let's not talk about that. Let's talk about the animal voices. I love her. Oh, actually, yeah, we're probably done with animal voices, anyways. Uh, you're not gonna convince me. I have one. So. He does have one. Maybe I'll record it and we'll put it on the next. That's a big hell no. Nah. To the na na. Brennan, that's nah. okay, right? 
That's fine. Okay. Sir, you can kindly go over in that corner and screw off. <laughs> uh, hey, this is kind of a different, big different topic, a 180. I watched that new Dave Chappelle special. Have you guys seen it? No. It's called Sticks and Stones. I honestly laughed like the whole time. And shortly after watching it, I looked up the review for it, and the very first article I found said, white people who like Dave Chappelle's Sticks and Stones are the worst kind of white people. And I'm like, what the hell? I guess they were saying only racists and bigots and misogynists and all kinds of stuff and homophobes liked his comedy. And so like, what you are? Apparently. <laughs> I mean, when you, watch, when you watch the special, half the audience is a different color than white. And then of the half color that's n- white, they're not even white. They're, they're like Asians and stuff like that. Huh? They're all paid to be there. Well, they were paid to laugh and clap then because they were laughing and clapping. I mean, I loved it because it was kind of the whole concept of if you're offended by this, we're calling it sticks and stones. You know, like sticks and stones break my bones, but words will never hurt me. But all these people are getting offended over it. And it's like people don't understand comedy anymore. I mean, not even understand it. Aren't you getting offended right now? No, I'm not offended by it. I'm like pointing out how stupid people are to to think that I'm a racist because I found something funny. I'm just kidding. He's going to kill me after this. <laughs> no, it. I'm talking He's about... He's like so- signing the divorce I'm, I'm talking about something that's comedy and you're over there... It's comedy to reaching. me. Reaching? Didn't you just say that Is that, that the word humor, reaching? You know, is to each its own. So Did I just say that? No. But you said that and We have a written, podcast. spoken record. I'm going to freak out. Don't please because we only have 56 subscribers and we can't lose any. Or maybe that would make some. I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> I just thought the whole thing was hilarious. And there's a few times I was like, please don't be an activist on something. And he makes fun of both sides. And it's like, I don't know, being able to laugh at yourself is a good trait. And I just I hate that I'm yeah, going to be classified as a racist in general terms. I hate just that things laugh. are so precious nowadays. I don't know if that's the correct word to use. Because they're, I don't know, I remember reading that... Who's the actor who plays Michael Scott? Steve Carell. Steve Carell. He said that he wouldn't do an Office reboot because... You can't joke. Yeah, because... Because you can't make a joke. Now, I've not lived in the time... I can't be one of those comedians that's like, you just can't joke anymore. Not like you could in the old stand-up comedy clubs. No, but it's it's talking from like somebody who watches sitcoms or something like that. They're not what they used to be. They're not the same type of humor. And when I saw his bit, I'm like, that's freaking hilarious. I watched one before that, and it was this guy. And all, all he, uh, I don't know, he was doing some kind of show. It was like in the UK or something. But literally every joke was just about having sex. And it was like, is this the only thing that Netflix will put on? And then here comes Dave Chappelle, and he's doing a joke that makes the audience the butt of the joke. He's like, He's doing an impression. He's got two impressions. In the second one, he's like, duh, I'm going to do something. I'm going to put you in jail, duh. And he's like, who is that? And you know, hear people in Trump, they're like, Trump. Or you hear people in the audience, they're like, Trump. He's like, no, it's you. That's what you sound like to me. And I'm like, you know what? That's pretty funny because, yeah, people will hunt you down now and just rip you apart. I don't know, whatever. I don't know, whatever. I was just... I saw that article and I'm like, are you, are you serious? I'm going to talk to Daniel about this, but by Vicar, you're in his stead. Sorry, I can't replace him. Well, you could try. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, hold on. I can't believe I let my phone die. I want to talk about Dave Chappelle. I also had something on truth. Oh, there you go. About the media and lies, provable lies, but at a different time. That's not political. The, that's that right there shows how politically biased the media is. If you can t- can't talk about the media for fear of being political, how ridiculous is that? The media shouldn't be political at all. Oh my god. Oh man. Guys, are the beans cooking? Because I just had I just heard them open. Can of beans just was opened. My joke fell apart before it even started. Yeah, try again. 
All right. Well, is that the only thing? Come on, come on. Um, I voices. Uh... I wanted to talk a little bit about compassion. Compassion. Okay. So, okay. Uh, what was the show? I think we were watching. Was it a good place? And it kind of made me start to think about it. And she had said that new scientist lady. She was talking to Eleanor. 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 Who was that guy who used to play Sam in uh, Cheers? I don't know. Isn't it? I thought it was Ken. Or maybe it really is Sam. Hey, guy without Google credits. You want to see who plays Sam in Cheers? I really like him as an actor. I just like the way he talks. Um, anyways. Oh, podcasts are about explaining and elaborating. I need to know who this guy is. Ted Danson. Dancing. Thank you, uh, inaudible or faceless voice. All right. Ted Danson. Oh, no, no, no. Ted Danson plays in it. You're talking about Chidi's love interest. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't talking about him at all. I just uh, like him. What? Okay. <laughs> and she was talking to her, and she was asking, like, Eleanor was asking why she does bad things. And she said, because people's natural instinct at first was to fend for themselves and then they slowly had to learn to kind of help others and not be as selfish so to say and it's just curious to think why so many people especially in the workplace always try to help themselves first before others um i think that's one of our biggest problems that i mean i've only had one job (laughs) Not talking anything bad on my job, but I'm sure it's in every workplace. There's always you've had one coworkers. occupation. You've had many jobs. Okay, one occupation. Sorry, um, everyone just kind of worries about themselves and leaves others kind of left in the dust. And, and the same thing with customers. There's a lot of people who just want to assume the worst in people, and I just don't understand where it stemmed from, like why it continues to happen. I don't want to like brag about myself or anything but I don't like to I would rather put somebody else before me and I'm all about self love and I think that's absolutely great and there's times I probably should be a bit more selfish but I just don't say well you're the most selfless person I've ever met you always try giving and helping someone else one of the things (laughs) I love about you is how much you care about other people Uh, I don't know I guess if you want to get into it, I think people, do you think people are basically good or basically bad? It's like half and half. I don't know. I don't think I meet that many people who are basically good, honestly. Yeah. I mean, I think a good way to look at it, I truly believe people are basically bad. I don't think that there's like this innate wanting to be good that people have. But it goes back to your morals conversation of what people think is good and what isn't. Like, to me, what? I may think most people are bad because of how they view things, but they might think... No, 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 no. I mean, yes, as far as what you classify as bad, but as our society is, I think people are basically bad. Like, without any interaction, they will grow up and be basically animals. They want... Humans naturally want things that are kind of greedy, selfish, things that we consider bad traits. And I think, unless you're taught at a young age to like steer from that, like... Not liking somebody of a different race. People say that that's taught. And I think to an extent it is. But I think you naturally grow up not liking anything that's different from what you know. So maybe I guess... I mean, how do you change it? The first... I mean, the one thing that stuck with me was the golden rule. Just treat others how you want to. That's how you change it. It's just how you're taught and raised. When you're raised, you learn something different. But I think people from birth say they don't have any outside forces. We'll just naturally be towards what we would consider the bad side. The natural tendencies of being an animal. I mean, you know, certain things are taught in school. I mean, I remember the moment it was no, in no, no. third That's not grade. What I'm about, though. Whenever we were taught the golden rule, I'm like, wow, treat others the way you want to be treated. That is the most genius thing I've That's ever. That's not heard. what I'm talking about. I'm saying if you didn't have any outside forces, and somebody grew up, they would be what we would consider bad. That I mean, what I'm saying is people aren't just good naturally. I think goodness is something that's taught. It's it's goodness is like on the side of being more hard, more difficult, and things in nature tend to take the easier route. I don't know. I actually think the opposite. I think people are kind of born good because babies are so innocent, like little toddlers. You'll see. Them. I mean, of course, they have little attitudes sometimes, but they will just do things to be nice sometimes, and it'll I don't know. It'll 
blow you away. I don't know. Maybe I, I, you haven't I, been around kids that much. No, I have. I just think it, I've also been a lot of, around a lot of brats. I think good and bad at that stage is kind of learned from the parents. But I think naturally, kids don't want to share. Kids, kids are tor- kids tend to be kind of bad. It's just kind of. I think humans are naturally bad. And I think starting from the age that you start to even learn language or learn is when you start to learn to be good. I don't think a kid will ever naturally be selfless and want to share or anything like that. But I think that as they start to learn, they'll pick it up immediately depending on how they're they're taught. I mean, but like what age is a good age to learn? Like what age is it? There's not a certain age. I'm not afraid to say too late, but I mean, once you get into a certain way, it's so hard to get out of it because you always will think of yourself as first and... I don't know. Which like is it a bad thing? There's just certain scenarios that I don't know. Just gets on my skin that everyone. Anyways, that's even not even what you're talking about. I just think people are basically bad, and that's why I think compassion is kind of like a, a hard thing. Like when you know when Mine Hunters came out that show, when I was discussing serial killers and. When they started studying about serial killers. Okay, maybe we should have a podcast about serial killers and I want to be in on that. I don't know. I have an obsession with knowing like specifically what they did. All the gory, awful details and it makes me sick. But Yeah, it's not very compassionate of you. Anyways, when they started discovering about uh, serial killers. They... When you're feeling alone and your spirit is breaking... They'll say to you, you'll be your good. Uh, we can't play off like nothing happened. Uh, we're wearing different <laughs> clothes because the computer stopped. I, well, honestly, I it had went black, and then we noticed it booting up, and because uh, it had to update or something on its own, and. Uh, it took till now, one day later, for us to start again. Good news, though, we didn't lose much. Um, you started talking about serial killers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was talking about Mindhunter, the show, how it was describing when they first were examining the term, before the term serial killers was a thing. They didn't even have any research into them. When they started learning about serial killers, they learned it was like... Uh, Almost always an issue with a mother, like a relationship with a mother. It feels weird saying this all again because everyone in this room has already heard this. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't think we have to go back into it. I don't even remember why we got on the subject of serial killers. So. Because I said I believe people were innately bad. And you said you believe people were basically good. I think whenever people are born and they're just little babies, babies are good. And then they learn ways from their parents or from others. How can, that, how can they be good? They don't do anything. How can they be bad? I'm not saying they are bad. I'm saying they're going to grow up with the tendency to be bad. Because being bad is easier than being good. Living by rules is harder than living without rules. Maybe it's just because you grew up bad. I don't know. Wow. Hmm. <laughs> Joke's on you because you married me. Oh, that's fair. Uh-huh. But one great thing about coming back the day after, my phone's charged. <laughs> uh, so we missed the whole segment with uh, Serial Killers because we got the book out. We lost about 10 minutes of audio. Kind of sad, but at least it wasn't more. Oh my gosh, can you imagine? I would have freaked out. Oh! <laughs> Did you bite your cheek? No, I touched the pepper and then my eye. <laughs> you have to hold your eyebrow up. Well, I can't. I can't. <laughs> I can't do anything. Uh. Oh, I was gonna talk about jury duty. Oh, and how you didn't call on Friday? No, no. When we, I mentioned at the beginning of this, yesterday, <laughs> that uh, about how much of a coincidence yesterday was. What is the coincidence? Of getting jury duty. Not really, maybe. You know, it's supposed to be random, I guess, right? Yeah. People go their whole lives without getting jury duty, though. What's the coincidence of getting jury duty 
two times in your lifetime. What's the coincidence of getting it two times within like two years of each other? What's the coincidence that your mother-in-law gets called for jury duty at the same time you get called for jury duty and another person in your department gets called for jury duty? That's a little like coincidental, right? Maybe you should buy a lottery ticket. Uh, well, I'm not so sure jury duty constitutes as lucky. You know what I mean? I could go buy a lottery ticket. It doesn't mean I'm going to get the winning numbers. It just means I'll probably go to jail. <laughs> Anyways, I didn't realize it at the time, but not appearing for jury duty was like a crime that you could go to jail for. And the first time I was called... I don't know why I'm telling Sable this. She already knows. This is why, that's why it's so weird having you here, because everything I want to talk about... You know already. Thanks. It's okay. I already feel unwelcome. What the heck? You're my first guest. Not by choice. Oh, it was a choice? I could have had... I could have had a number of people. (laughs) This is... You're lucky to be on this show right now. Oh, my God. Uh... Let me see. I don't... I put hard to understand menu. I don't... Maybe smell? Um, I also put soup snakes? <laughs> <laughs> and we're soup snakes because... No, I didn't mean soup snakes. <laughs> what, do, what do I mean to... Hard to understand. Oh, I meant you're supposed to call every night before or the morning of, and it will tell you if you're supposed to appear. The problem is, when you call the night before, it'll say, like, jurors are supposed to report September, what did you say, 8th? 9th. Jurors are supposed to report September 9th. And then you'll call the next day, and it won't say anything about, like, if you're not supposed to come in, they won't say jurors are not supposed to report September 9th. They'll say jurors are supposed to report September 10th. Or so I think. I don't know. Uh, it's not It's not clear at all. <clears throat> this fact, is probably going to be our last podcast because Ben's going to be in jail. Oh, the last time I was the CSM and I remember going to work after this is, they, they summon you for four months. You've got four months of jury duty. It was my last possible appearance to go. And I'm like, oh, I forgot to call again. I forgot to call every single time. And I went to work. And I remember calling uh, the, what what are they called? Uh, What is she called? Clerk? I don't know. She she was the Boone County Clerk. I remember calling. And I don't even think they answered. I just remember them saying that I was supposed to report. I think the... I think I got a message of a machine and it said I was supposed to report. And I'm like, well, who the hell do I talk to and say I'm sorry? So I called the sheriff's office and they're like, yeah, we don't really deal with that. I'm like, I just want to make sure I don't have a warrant out for my arrest. I really don't want to get arrested at work. <laughs> they're like, well, we don't know if you're about to get an arrest warrant or a warrant of your arrest or not. You're gonna, you have to take that up with somebody else. And I'm like, are you kidding me? You're the You're the sheriff. You can't tell me if I can... Uh, I, uh, short story, I didn't get arrested. So this time, I made doubly sure. <laughs> I put alarms on my phone. I was put down, like, they started using the calendar. But still, even when I called, the message, the message system doesn't even make sense. And so when I looked at the hours for the county clerk, it said open 8 to something. I called at 8.03. Still got the message machine. Can you not even open? I mean... Anyways, Friday I forgot to call. <laughs> or Thursday night I forgot to call. And Friday, I still don't know if I was supposed to show up or not. Hopefully not. When we went there, though, for like our basically our juror orientation, there were like, I don't know, probably 100 people there. Really? Yeah, there was a ton of people there. And then the judge was talking about, uh, we had such a good uh, juror turnout that, uh, most cases don't even make it to a jury because they're not afraid of juries not coming in. You know what I mean? Like a lot of, if you're worried about, uh, if your case is going to go to a jury, I don't know. It's like not in your favor to go in front of. I don't know. Never mind. I should get the judge on the phone and ask him what he said. 
Um, one last thing about it, you know the word sequester, right? They can kind of, I'm going to call it, uh, what is it called when you, it's like a, it's like when something's contaminated and you're put in solitude. Quarantined? Quarantined. You basically, I'm going to use the word quarantined instead of sequestered because you're basically allowed no contact with the outside world and when you do get contact, it's got to be monitored basically or pretty much strictly. But that's only like on high profile cases, right? No. It's any time that a jury does not reach a decision. And I think the judge said most decisions have to be unanimous. I think all criminal cases have to be unanimous and civil cases don't have to be. I don't remember exactly what he said, but basically he said that if they if, if it's a hung jury, which is one that cannot become uh, cannot get a unanimous unanimous vote, that they will become sequestered until they be, they uh, can find a vote or can agree. And so it can take he he told a story about his mom having been sequestered for five weeks. That mom probably refused to go along with everyone else just so she get a vacation. <laughs> I paid for a hotel, paid for lunches and everything. Uh, only one phone call a week or something to her husband. But that was a while back. I don't know what they do now. But when, I, when he was telling me that story, I'm like, can you imagine? Sable would freak out. I would die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't enjoy it either. Except Whatever, for you food. would love it. I would love the free food. I don't want a roommate with some stranger. Are you kidding me? That's like how people die. I don't want to do that. Anyways, we're not going to be talking about serial killers because I forgot our train of thought. Uh, I would like to talk about how stupid Microsoft is. For I hit... Reschedule or pick a time. The button said pick a time. I hit pick a time. What time I'm, did you pick? It never popped up. That's the problem. I open the computer and it has a little window and it says pick a time, uh, restart now, or um, remind me later. Something like that. So I hit pick a time. The menu goes away and I'm waiting for the pop-up so I can pick a time. I'm still waiting for the pop-up. It never came. And then we're in the middle of this podcast, and then it completely shuts down. I'm going to write a very heated letter. <laughs> My name's Karen. I'm going to write a very heated letter to the owner of Microsoft. I want his manager. No Karen in particular, just like the meme Karen. It's really nice to just sit here and then don't say anything, and you'll just keep rambling. Yes, I will. <laughs> um, but I wrote down, I forgot that I wrote down more uh, some TV shows. We, For the video that's going to be released, we talked about our top five movies, and we talked about TV shows as well. I didn't prepare for this. No, you didn't. I just wanted to talk about a few shows that I've been trying to watch lately, and I started thinking about... Okay. So I wrote down Twilight Zone, Dark Crystal, A Good Place, 13 Reasons Why, Stranger Things. Let me start with my least favorite out of all of those that I just read off, which is 13 Reasons Why. I hate... Wait, you have to give us 13 Reasons Why you don't like it? Um, well, give me 13 names of the cast and there's your 13 Reasons. I hate the idea of... I hate this reason. I, I could come up with 13 Reasons. I want to... Well... <laughs> Awesome. I, I need a little bit more time to like prepare my my arguments, but for one, I hate any story where the kids are somehow all more adult than the adults and like know everything that's going on and they're dealing with all the tough issues. Second, I hate when something happens and then it becomes kind of popular and then the creators of it make it out to be more than it is. When it first came out, it was like the first season I thought was good. I thought it was. And then uh, after that first season, everybody going crazy about the last episode. Remember that episode where? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. After that, ep after that, everybody's going on about it. The second season comes, and all of a sudden, at like at the beginning of every every episode, they've got a little monologue. They're like, "If you, if if you're experiencing these thoughts, or whatever, we're talking about real issues that teens have to deal with." It's like, look, okay, I'm maybe not be every teen, but I went to school just the same and. 
I never had to dealt with a shooter. I never dealt with. Now there there was a girl in our in our school that did did uh, lose her battle with depression. I'm assuming, but uh, it wasn't like this. It was nothing like what they depict. I mean, they want to talk about real issues. That was nothing that they talk about in that movie. How can I personally say I experienced it all in our high school? Okay, that was reason one. <laughs> or that was reason like three. The other one is like, I guess I did just mention all of them. I don't like when kids somehow have the master plan. They're so much smarter than the adults. And I don't like how they made it into something that's way more than it is. It should just be a show. And I don't, I, I definitely did not like the second <laughs> season, but this third season... I don't know. And do you remember when they were talking about the they're gonna stop like smoking and then they're the Stranger Things or they're gonna stop smoking because of that? And here's this guy who got effed in the butt with a broom handle. Remember that? I don't. I can't remember what it was, but another. Oh, thing. I remember, and that's what caused him to go want to shoot her. No, I'm talking about like the smoking thing, Stranger Things. You, you don't remember what? I mean, what are you, do you remember about, that story? The, no. Well, you don't. You don't read stories like that anyways but as soon as I hear something like that I'm looking it up I forget a lot of things too so <laughs> I don't really yeah okay that is on the record I don't remember saying that so you're still screwed okay well we're just gonna pull up the podcast and then I'll be like what podcast <laughs> <laughs> all right so I dislike 13 reasons why I also dislike not finishing something so we're gonna have to finish out the third season well I know there's probably gonna be a fourth season so not if everybody stops watching it that's not, not everyone... gonna happen the more people talk about it the more popular it gets and yeah I know that it. just by talking about it somebody's gonna so... go I'm gonna show him I'm gonna go watch it it's it's riveting I it's just not... don't like the new girl that's all and also, if I was Hannah and someone said I had a big butt, I'd be kind of happy about it. But you're not happy about it. You're like, Ben, my hips are too wide. Okay, that was my hips, not my butt. Don't tell me how to live my life. I'm not. I'm just saying. Fact checked. <laughs> All right. So I don't like 13 Reasons Why, but I don't like stopping something without finishing it. So we're kind of locked into trying to watch that. We still have to watch all of, what's it called? The the Winter is Coming. Game of Thrones? Game of Thrones. <laughs> we still have to the finish that. The Winter is Coming. <laughs> That's the show. My favorite guy got killed off in the first season. I'm not going to talk about it because I'd hate to spoil anything for anyone and I will not read comments on this because I don't want anything spoiled for me. In fact, until we watch all of the seasons, I'm just not going to speak to anybody. You come up to me and want to talk to me about something? Mm -mm. You better be just using hand signals. Uh, let's see. I really want to finish Game of Thrones. However, after the last episode, the last time we watched it was like June 6th, right? Because June 7th we went on the boat or... Right? So June 6th. Or was it June like 3rd? No, yeah, Anyways, it was back in June, in the beginning of June, that we last watched the last episode that I can remember. <laughs> and But it was so gruesome and so disturbing that I just don't... I want to watch it. I don't want to bring myself to watch it again. I'd rather go back and finish all of Breaking Bad. Well, something good happened. Or finish all of Dexter. Look. Dexter, somebody dies like every day. Yeah, but they're bad people. I told you, I'm okay with killing if he it's justice. He didn't kill the right person. Mm -hmm. What do you mean he didn't kill the right person? Not one person. The girl? Yeah. You haven't watched a long enough. I know enough. she dies eventually, but he waited too long. Okay, I don't even understand you. It's suspense, Sable. Well, I don't like it. It gives me anxiety. Okay, well, I'd rather go back and watch those than watch something that I... It gives me I actually stopped watching Dexter because of the anxiety I was getting but it's not the terrible feeling that I got from Game of Thrones Game of Thrones makes me feel bad like that last episode God just putting me, myself in the but position but you it's addicting 
You can't stop. I mean, if well, you don't want to watch it, I'll watch it without you. No, you will not. <laughs> That's like the worst thing you ever said to me. <laughs> uh, okay. Stranger Things was another movie that, or another series that I absolutely loved the first season. I thought it was beautiful. But now it's just kind of like getting stupid. Can I interrupt? What is this podcast even about? I feel like this is the most are. random podcast that we've hey, done so far. I'm going to blame it on Daniel. Because <laughs> he's not here. No, look. I think that's what podcasts are. I mean, they basically... Correct me if I'm wrong. What do we even out, title this podcast as? You're not the editor, don't matter. We're just here to talk. See if I ever invite you back. <laughs> You're not even talking. Where are you going? For the record, I have not laughed yet. <laughs> I'm laughing at myself trying not to laugh. Yeah, basically, okay. my brain told myself not to smile, and that's why I laughed. Deflection. No. Um, seriously, what does it matter? We're just talking. Do you I not want to talk? Yeah. I just... This is going to be the worst podcast we've released. <laughs> and this is why it's going to be the worst. <laughs> why? You just have to speak. <laughs> okay. So, can I finish with why I don't like Stranger Things now? Oh, I thought I needed to speak. Um, You just did. <laughs> Stranger Things does the same thing that I don't like about 13 Reasons Why the kids who are even younger all of a sudden know everything they all of a sudden know everything I, we couldn't even I think we only got into the second episode of the third se- it's the third season yeah it was really slow yeah, I just got super bored, and it just did not feel like the same... There's just a magnet problem. Magnet problem? Yeah, she was in her store, and she was trying... Like, all the... Things, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> magnet problem. Yeah, I mean, that's one thing you could remember, or, like, all the rats exploding. <laughs> oh, okay. <Yeah. laughs> it seems the magnetic polars have shifted. Um... <laughs> I'm sick of Stranger Things already. It's not what it originally was. A Good Place. I am so happy that's the third season's I released. I love that show. I love it too. I remember when you were first watching it, you were watching it without me, and I... Because you, you watch things in the background while I'm doing something else. Mm-hmm. Uh, sure. I don't know what I was doing, but you were you were watching that. And I started thinking, I was like, this is kind of a cool show. Let's restart it. And so we just restarted together. And now it's a show that I think is our show. One of our many shows. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I do that. I, I love the concept of it. Yeah. I like the humor in it. And it's really good, yeah. Just everything, yeah. Everything about the show is really Did good. we already talk about A Good Place? Because we talked about the guy that's in it that I like, who was on Cheers. Whatever we were talking about. Compassion. And what she was saying to Oh, Eleanor. yeah, you mentioned it, yeah. yeah to, to Chidi or whatever. No, no, she mentioned it to Eleanor. Eleanor. Yeah. And I liked it because he I mean, called her Eleanor. I like that, Eleanor. That's what, that's what he said. He said Eleanor. Ted Danson, that's his name. Eleanor. Eleanor. I love how he talks. Eleanor. I feel like me and him could go to get a beer together. And I feel like we could just be good friends. I could be friends with Eleanor. I couldn't. Why? She farts. <laughs> you fart all the time. Hey, cut this out. <laughs> all right. Um, Dark Crystal, Age of Resistance. Something I've been okay. looking forward to for Two a very long time. thumbs down. I don't like anything about the Dark Crystal. I just want to say that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Dark Crystal, the movie... With the beautiful Jim Henson. Han- Jim Hansen? Henson? Created in 1982, right? Just learned that last night. During the, the bit, I think, that got cut out. Is that the bit that got cut out? I don't know. This podcast is all over the place. Oh, my Jesus. Anyways, 
I remember as a kid watching that and being scared. Like I, I fell in love with that movie as like a horror movie, but as just I thought it was a cool story. You got this. Well, I don't even know the story hardly. <laughs> it's like this world called Thra is basically energized and in harmony with the crystal, and these the crystal cracks and these beings come about. And all these years go by, and just a really cool story. I love it. And it's puppets. And I, I remember another movie that I loved that was puppets was uh, Muppet Treasure Island. Muppet Treasure Island. Do you guys remember that? Oh, I did God. not watch the Muppets. <laughs> oh, I loved the Muppets when I was younger. But anyways, Dark Crystal. I've always really loved that. Jamer Lion, Gothim, get the Gelflings. Uh, I truly love that movie. So I was super pumped when I heard that there was going to be a series on Dark Crystal coming up. Let me tell you, that is the most disappointing. <laughs> I watched the first episode. I couldn't even get through it all. I finally did. But it was so hard to get through it. It was just so disappointing. Was it boring? or? I mean, it, not exactly boring. It was, it was weird. It was weird. Like, they really puppeted it up. Like, it was almost for kids. Like, they would make these really strange noises. And, like, it was kind of... And goofy in a way and then at the same time their dialogue would use words that I was like yeah that's kind of a big word I don't there's no way this is for a little kid so it was almost like they were trying to go get the audience that used to love that movie while also trying to appeal to a younger audience at the same time and I don't know I think they just I think they also mess with lore a little bit from what I remember from the original Dark Crystal was like when the crystal cracks, there was these beings, and the crystal cracked, it kind of made a mirror, like duplicates. Like, the Skeksis were the bad part of the beings, and they became a, their own creature, and then the Uru, I don't remember what their name was, but they become a different creature. But in this new series, it was like the Skeksis are their own creatures that came to this planet and started doing stuff. And I was just like, that's just not at all what I remember. They just kind of ruined. <laughs> they really ruined something that I was really pumped for, man. Most remakes or things like that. But it's not even a remake. Good. Well. This could have been a beautiful continuation. Most continuations also are crap. You know what? I'll agree with you on that. <laughs> uh. Okay, the last thing I wrote down was Twilight Zone. I have gotten so hard back into... <laughs> <laughs> I have gotten... <laughs> you gotten what? <laughs> I've gone deep into the Twilight what Zone. What is the Twilight Zone? <laughs> you don't want to know. <laughs> no, I love it. It's, you, back in 1950s, <laughs> black and white... I remember when, my, when I was younger, I used to hate watching the black and white movies with my parents, but... Man, I just... And you know what? That might be where my wacky ideas come from. Because I remember watching some Twilight Zone when I was younger. And then now I'm restarting it off from uh, episode one. And there's some really cool ideas. One funny thing, though, is how they depict, depict the future in every episode. It's always the astronauts are wearing some weird... I mean, they didn't have anything to go off of, but it's just... <laughs> It's almost like they're wearing just tinfoil like, suits. Like It's almost just like they wrap themselves with aluminum foil. They don't even have helmets on. <laughs> it's like they expected it to be all oxygen everywhere. But there were a few cool ideas. Like there was one where they're talking about this hydrogen bomb. And they're like, yeah, it's going to go off in at least 48 hours or something. And the world as we know it's going to end. And then it's talking about this guy who's getting his family to go to another planet and take a spaceship. They finally get to the spaceship, and it's what we would call a flying saucer. And you're like, well, that's kind of strange. And then they're flying. They're like, yeah, we're going to this planet that's supposed to have people just like us. It's called Earth. And I'm like, oh, there's a twist. They were aliens coming to Earth. We were the aliens, though, because they're the, you know. It's really cool. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Anyways. I love the Twilight Zone. Episode 32 of season one right now. It's okay. What's okay? Twilight Zone. You take that back. (laughs) 
you understand that most people are going to be listening and not watching, <laughs> and they're not going to know anything that you're doing. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> I don't you? have anything to say about the Twilight Zone. Well, what's He's something? He's going to kill me. Oh, yeah. I ruined it. I ruined the podcast. <laughs> you know what else I hate? When I don't say anything? <laughs> I don't know. Yes. No. What I was going to say was, when I hear a word over and over, from five weeks ago when we first started saying the word podcast, now I can't stand that word. Okay, Ben is really sensitive to basically everything, but specifically words. He doesn't you mean I'm like, alive? I have feelings in that d- way? I'm talking. Oh, who's sensitive now? Just saying, you want me to talk? Don't interrupt. Okay. He doesn't more. like abbreviations. He doesn't like like shortened words. Like instead of saying New York City, if somebody says NYC or something, he doesn't like that. And then we got on a kick of watching. Oh, what was that show where they just flip houses? Property Brothers. Yeah, and then the other one. With the uh, the guy and the girl. Yeah. What's his name? Ken. No. 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 Ken and Lorraine. No, no, those are those are the those ghost are like, hunters, yeah. aren't they? <laughs> What's her name? She's like Asian, and he's good old redneck white boy. Wow, are you assuming where she's from? I said she's Asian. That's not a country. Are you assuming her ethnicity. I didn't say she wasn't American. <laughs> She bleeds red just like me. Well, I, I don't know. I haven't seen her bleed. <laughs> I'm assuming she does. She might not be. She might be one of those people from the other planet where they had the H bomb before us. Fix her upper. That's where our H bomb came from. The mofos from the other planet that was trying to escape decided to bring their stupid ideas here. Now we can't. Now Russia is going to kill us, or China, or we're going to kill them. <laughs> Crazy world. Lots of smells. <laughs> I feel like this is just going to be a bunch of office references. <laughs> yeah. It's called Fixer Upper, right? Fixer Upper, yeah. Can I tell you something that's annoying about that show? Okay, are you about to say the word space? Ew, I cannot no. say the word space Sable. because they always talk about open space. Are my ear bleeding? Space. No. Just the same way with Queer Eye. He's got the French tuck every episode. She's always distressing something. Uh, cause it looks good. Okay, it can look good, but hearing that over and over and over and over. Sorry, I understand some of you might just be listening, and that might have really hurt your ears. <laughs> Keep it as loud as you can. I just, it kind of gets old, cause then once you've seen one episode, you've seen them all. That's why we're still not watching it. Wait, that's why we're not watching it still. How do I need to rephrase that word to say we are not currently watching it? We're not currently watching a lot of things. Yeah, but that one. I would still watch it, but you're sensitive to the word space. I mean, you know when people say you got a low IQ when you cuss? Like you've got a limited vocabulary? If you can only use the word space, how little is your vocab? You can't say, look at this floor plan. Isn't it great? Isn't it open? No, they gotta go, look at this space. You didn't like the word open either. Well, open's better than space. Open is a verb. What is space? Space is, uh. It could also be a verb. Oh, space it out? Mm hmm. Yeah, you got me there. Boom, roasted. Hmm, where's the butter? <laughs> Call me Peking Duck. I'm roasted. Brennan, please don't laugh at his jokes. Just don't laugh. Brennan. Brennan, I need you to listen to me right now. Okay. We're being attacked. You can you can laugh as it's often the as you want. Seriously, are we gonna ever talk about the Russians? Wait, we can't. Okay. Because they're listening. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're in my mic. Wait, Brennan, why have you accepted to do this gig? <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> Don't worry, mother. Mother Russia. Oh, have I told everybody? I am so excited for tomorrow. My P99 is supposed to be in. I've been waiting like a week for this. I think you told 
I have, but it was yesterday, which was a day older. I'm more excited now, so I think it's relevant to bring it back up. No? <laughs> Brendan, come on. She ain't laughing. You gotta laugh with me. Don't laugh. You're in a predicament there, boy. Uh, I guess we don't have to talk about it if you don't want to. But I really liked Property Brothers. It was really strange, though, because... I don't like it that much. I liked it. They often... I don't, know, I don't remember. I just remember the only... The only like, bit I could remember of them was when they were redoing their like family home or something where everybody's going to come and they were putting in a pool and like a slide and everything. Maybe that was the only season and that's what they did. I don't know. I didn't really like that show that much. And I don't know at what point we got on a kick of watching all these different house shows. Couldn't be because we wanted to do our own house. What point in our lives? Were we already living here? Yeah. I think so. I like it. And even if all the houses look the same, it's a good look. I like it. I disagree. Okay, well. If everything looks the same, then what's so good about it? What's so unique? I don't know, but to talk about our house for a minute, have we already talked about the house? We moved in, what, three years ago now? Almost three years? This house, let's talk about our history of trying to buy a house. It was not, can we, can we talk about how we should have had more classes? I know you see the memes about like, we need to learn how to do balance our checkbooks and stuff, but yeah, we should have really had a class that taught like, when you go out in the world, how do you go about buying a home? And lucky for me, Paul, my childhood friend, his dad was a realtor, and so he helped out a lot. But it didn't, nothing ever went the way we wanted it to go. Maybe it ended up the best way it could have, but we were going to, we put money down on this house for this guy, the guy who owned it died, and it went into like a trust or something, or to an estate to his family. And I don't know, we waited, how long did we wait after we put up an offer for that? Mm hmm. It was like a month or so. Yeah, they didn't just come back and say no. They waited forever to tell us no. And I think it was because they had a renter in there at I the time. Know. I'm glad we didn't get that house. Well, we just really wanted to live together. Yeah, but I'm glad we didn't get that house. Yeah, I mean... We would not have made probably any money back. We would have had to rent it out. But Who knows what we're going to make on this. And then we looked at a few more. There were a few more homes that we looked at. There was that really nice one actually near where Paul lives. Remember that one? With the beagle? On Liberty? Or not beagle. What was that? Basset Hound. Basset Hound. Oh, <laughs> my God. It had the longest, floppiest ears I've ever seen. It had, like, its own clean little laundry room. Yes, and it was just, it had a big yard, a shaded yeah. tree. That was a nice home. That was a really nice home. It sold for a lot. I think the same day we went to look at it, it was the same day that somebody offered and made, and they agreed on the offer. We couldn't even have come close to the offer that they made. Then there's that house on Peach Street, and I never saw it in person, but that was the cutest little house I've ever seen. It was that blue one, mm -hmm. and I wanted that one really bad. There was Peach Street. There was one on Salmon Lane that I was... That wasn't the dream home, but that was a home that I thought Meh. was okay. It was. It had a big yard. Yeah, it was okay. Big flat yard. But, but then there's that tornado that there, was. came... What a coincidence. We didn't get the house. The tornado came through and destroyed Salmon Lane. I say destroyed, but... There's only like a couple houses on there. They got they got there was that one house back in the distance, though, who got really hit. And um, there was the house near my parents. Remember back there coming off Prospect up that hill? They had the really low... I don't know. It needed work, but it was a cool home. It had like this own sunroom. Like, you go into the entrance that goes into this big sunroom, and then it enters in this big living room. I don't think I saw that one. No, you were there. I remember. There was that one you that was there. absolutely gross. Which is probably Eric that lost one. Where foot flop. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Let's tell that story. <laughs> okay. That was on Oak Street, I yeah. think. It was a big, big house. There was a hole in the ceiling, so every time it rained, it just got more and more wet and nasty inside. And then the toilets had broken or something and leaked everywhere. I remember there was carpet. And 
Paul's brother Eric was the one that was showing us this house. He's got his flip flop on. on. <laughs> he was walking through, and it got stuck. It stuck to the carpet on the bottom, and his foot was not in it. And he was trying to hop along because he, he didn't no, want to touch no, this nasty molded carpet. Not only that, but he almost threw up. He was yeah. like, "What?" Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is oh. one of the funniest things. Ben oh. finds whenever people throw up. That is, he finds it so funny. Oh my god! My favorite time was when Paul. <laughs> With that cat litter? With the cat litter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. There was so much. When we got this house. Okay. Before I tell that story, I'm gonna, we're going to finally talk about this house. Uh, when they when they showed us this house, apparently the woman who owned this home owned several homes. And something happened. And they consolidated all of her belongings to basically this home. This home was full oh my of garbage ceiling every room had crap and crap and crap and the garage was full the living room was full you couldn't i mean did we take enough pictures i, I don't, I don't even know for t- i mean you couldn't even see everything there was this pink carpet that ran along the whole thing and a lot of it was wet and nasty and it smelled like cat the urine the whole house was, was, it was yellow but it wasn't supposed to be yellow no it was full of tobacco smoke i'm assuming it was tobacco i don't <laughs> <laughs> Live your life, bro. Uh, but, and you can still see it on the inside of like door frames and stuff. We okay. tried to we tried to wipe as much as we could, uh, but we. Anyways, uh, what was the other thing? And then there was like. In that room, there was. I black think there mold. was. All over the walls too, like middle height of the wall, there was like just fingerprints and lines, and it was disgusting. And I guarantee you that that was. I don't know what else it could have been. It was disgusting. But um, Table spent a lot of time with TSP, which... Mm, TSP. TSP, which is also in baby cereal. I remember when I found that out, I was like, that's odd. Things that can break (laughs) down smoke stains is in baby's cereal? Government. Um, So we wiped the walls... And then we started painting. We lived in the living room for a while. Paul helped me a lot. He helped me rip up all the carpet. And While I was gone. And it was perfect because... Where did you go? Uh, I think my grandma died. So I went to Louisiana. No, for no, For three no. days. It was right before we moved in. I went to Louisiana. But... Okay. Okay. Then what was the deal with... When I redid the bathroom, where did you go? Because you weren't here for that either, and I tried to surprise you. You went down to Louisiana for that, too. My grandpa. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anyways, it just so happened that our our town had like a citywide dump. And so we got rid of all that carpet for free. For free! That was insane. That was a huge help. But I still spent tons of money trying to get rid of all the garbage. Yep. So a lot of the money that I had planned to use to try to work on the house <laughs> was spent in getting rid of garbage that was in the house. And um, we started putting down vinyl planks and stuff like that. And uh, I, I'm not I'm not a contractor. I don't know how to do all this stuff. So a lot of it was just watching YouTube and learning. And my friend Paul knows a lot of this stuff. But um, we really kind of hit a rut between charging too much money on cards, getting the windows buying a new vehicle after somebody rear-ended mine uh we just kind of hit a spot where money just kind of tight you know so progress has stopped in the home but you know we're almost caught up again we're gonna start working on it and then there we had to have work done on the outside of the house there was a woodpecker that would constantly mess with the home oh, that was ridiculous i contemplated getting my gun out and shooting it contemplated not did it not do it okay didn't you try and shoot it with your blow dart thing? I made a blow dart gun, and I thought, no, I did not try to shoot it because I think it's a crime to kill a woodpecker. Is it really? I don't know, but I'm not going to risk it. I thought, what would be the odds if you could hit something the size of a woodpecker with a homemade blow gun? I just thought about it, merely. There were some homemade darts stuck in the <laughs> roof of our home, though. <laughs> uh yeah, me and Dad made some blow guns. We got some PVC. I saw something on... It was like a Facebook video, and we just made some blow guns. Basically, if you take a little uh, roofing nail, 
you hot glue or, or if, you, if you get a post-it note you can roll it in like a what do you call it a cone cut off the end and you can just slip a nail through there and hot glue it and you got a dart I still have that it's upstairs I wanted to show it to you the actual thing itself that blew the darts it was used as cardboard Brendan's arms, arms? <laughs> yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah um so there's a little bit about the house but going back to where the carpet was full of cat urine mm-hmm. and wet <laughs> the trash can was completely full of cat litter and it was too heavy that there's no the machine might have been able to move it but uh, I remember taking it out just so we could get rid of a little bit of it at a time and also trash oh my god <laughs> I've always been able to handle smells <laughs> but Paul smelled it and he was on his hands and knees gagging his guts <laughs> out on the ground I remember I think I cried that day from laughing <laughs> that was my favorite memory uh, that was that was beautiful. He loves to make people sick. <laughs> yeah, that's great. He'll do it to me. He'll try and say something to make me gag. Oh yeah, I knew somebody that if you talked about licking the toilet, they would throw up. Just even the idea of licking the toilet. Ruth is very sensitive. Yeah, she is like that too. My mom's pretty sensitive. My dad you will get <laughs> he'll get on all fours like a dog and start like pretending to throw up, and then my mom just <laughs> it. she's it. a sympathy throw upper. <laughs> I love it. I mean, yeah, that's that's one of the greatest things. I love that so much. Uh, I remember we also had the city contact us about how disgusting our home was. <laughs> no, okay. That it wasn't that bad. No, here, we had a whole bunch of other stuff that was inside the house that was just trash that we were slowly throwing away. It was on the outside, and they told us to clean it up. Here's basically. how much garbage there was. In the driveway... We had a mound of, of trash. We got rid of it. Bring out another mound of trash. Get rid of that. Bring out another mound of trash. We did that probably three or four times. But it seemed like it was always the same trash pile. So the city did leave us a note saying like they were going to find us because of how dirty it was. And I remember calling them and going, hey, listen here, bub. Uh, well, or miss. I don't remember who it was. Please don't find me. I don't have any money. <laughs> we just moved into this home and it's disgusting. Don't find us. Or else I'm going to have to live on this side of this road. Which is probably cleaner. Uh, <laughs> no, good times. Good times. I remember thinking that one of our neighbors called us in. I've hated our neighbors ever since. I'm pretty sure it was a certain neighbor. Who? To be fair, if it's the same one I'm thinking of, has been very helpful recently. Um, sure. Trying to make maybe up she for. She feels guilty. Maybe I don't know. Or he feels guilty. Or Zed feels guilty. Zay, um, no, we're just at a halt right now in the house. So, well, that's the setting of the the setting of this show. She's in her home. Which we're working on. <laughs> we don't want to shoot it here. For everybody watching on YouTube, it is kind of a... We're waiting on our expert uh, filmer and editor to uh, build us a, or find us a new set. <laughs> About that, boy. <laughs> Need some dough. Get in there kneading. Mix that yeast and stuff. Man, half of these jokes Daniel would laugh at. I'm not going to respond to your insults. Was that an insult? I just said... No, no, no. The fact that you took that as an insult really speaks about what you think that you're doing. My best friend, Daniel. I just love him so much. I wish he could be here for the podcast. Is he your friend, too? Look. Sable. Wife. We married each other. It's okay. (laughs) I've got a friend. (laughs) Brendan's a good friend, too. They're in love. Ben and Daniel. We're not in love. Damn. 
Ew. What is love? That's disgusting. <laughs> I am never going to fall in love. <laughs> oh my god. I don't want this podcast to end because I'm screwed. And every minute that goes by, I'm more screwed. Uh, what, what was something else? I do like talking about stories. Do we have a good story? Maybe this is just a good old story time, say, well. Um, how long have we been recording? 50? 50 on top of the 40? Yeah. 50 minutes? Okay, guys. Uh, bye. <laughs> uh, for real, we're going to go ahead and end it here. Just because it doesn't feel like that long. But I knew I was super tired. We had 40 minutes from last night, 50 minutes from tonight. I'm so, so sorry if you stayed to the end because it's not been a good one, this one. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Sable's going to be making a lot more guest appearances. This is not it of Sable. Oh, no, this is it. This is, yeah, we're going to get like two views and 50 dislikes. And he's going to be like, it's because of you, Sable. And then I'm never going to be on the podcast again. Hey, you know what's great about blaming someone else? It's not your fault. <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't be the person who's blaming someone's fault. What I'm trying... What? <laughs> I'm trying to articulate <laughs> that if I blame you... It makes it not my fault. That's the great thing about blaming people. I mean, it's not great for you. No, th- okay, for real, I just joke with Sable too much. We are madly in love. I love him. I, yeah, is, everyone's going to think we, like, we're completely serious. Remember that girl who other. was like, good luck on your marriage? Remember that? Jasmine's friend? Who was that? I I remember her name. I do remember it. I do. I don't want to... I don't want to... Okay, we don't. Haley. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I remember she came over and she was having some kind of trouble with her beau. And uh, at the end of the night, I guess she said, good luck on your marriage or something to us. Or she said it to Jasmine. And it was like, look, I get that me and Sable... I'm I'm not probably a nice person. I do joke around way too much, and I usually go for the hard hitting stuff. <laughs> so when you do that to your wife, it seems like you're really not gonna be married for long. But trust me, we and Sable dated long enough before we got married. We know we're gonna work. Yeah. Damn it! Why is this not staying up? Ugh. No. Uh, she will be back on the show, not a podcast. I'm tired of that word. Can't believe I just said it. She'll be back on the show. Um, Brennan, as long as we know, is here to stay. Daniel's here to stay. Things are going good. Uh, <laughs> no one's fired. No one's dying. Um, I love having Sable on it. Just I, I'm worried about it because the jokes I make, it is more receptive of a friend. Like when you joke to a friend that way, more than to your wife, who will then try to kill you later. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna kill you. We're not being if serious. I am not heard from again. Shut up. Look, I know you know about serial killers. Okay, we're still going too far. Okay, <laughs> time to end this. Until next time, this has been a bad podcast. When you're feeling alone.